I'm going to tell you a story, a sad, very tragic tale of the death of Alphonse the camel. Once upon a time, there was a camel called Alphonse. For various reasons relating to an unfortunate accident during his birth, the camel had severe back problems. This was not the end of his misfortune, however, because he had a cruel, evil owner called Frank the Camel Killer. Frank was a businessman. The class is a year nine group. All our history classes here are mixed ability. Understandably, Frank's very bitter and has never trusted camels since. My approach to teaching now, gifted and talented is um, what you need to try and decide is what is the ultimate achievement, the ultimate kind of analysis or thinking in history. Um, and that's your first job as a teacher is to say, well, where, where do we want to get people to? Plenty of camels had died doing similar work to Alphonse and his friends. And after a particularly costly few weeks where camels are keeling over left, right and centre, the camels have had enough and they decide to form a trade union. I was teaching a, a paper that had a specific focus on causal reasoning. Teachers aren't, aren't philosophers. You don't, you don't have an idea and then go and do it. You often have a hunch and you just think, oh, I'll have a go with that. And my hunch derived simply from the fact there is this cliche, the straw that broke the camel's back. So I thought we've got to cause a causal problem there. Why did the camel's back break? Let's make a story out of it. On top of it all, Alphonse was sometimes his own worst enemy. Alphonse would show off how much he could carry. He thinks he's a bit hard, does Alphonse? Kids are often inhibited in history by the, fact, by the notion that you know, the teacher knows the complex story, other people might know the complex story and they can't possibly speculate. And when you have a story that quite clearly isn't true, and that uh, you know, it, it enables that kind of speculative thinking. On a whim, he decided to add the soggy straw he'd been chewing to Alphonse's load. Alphonse groaned obligingly and keeled over and died of radical and irreversible back collapse. And our question for today is, was it really the straw that broke the camel's back? Anyone in the room can take part in the analysis, um, but also because of the nice sort of subtleties and, and interesting details and the sort of the complex relationships which are built into the story. Um, very able students are still very challenged by that, although on the face of it, it seems like a silly story about a camel. It's not, it's a very subtle, complicated story about a camel. What I'd like you to do is to have another read of the story yourselves and see if you can find as many causes of Alphonse's death as possible. Off you go. There are lots of different approaches you can take to teaching the most able or to gifted and talented kids or what everyone wants to call them. The key point is that it's about high achievement rather than about giftedness. Talking about giftedness reifies it a bit. It turns it into a special property of a special kind of kid. Lots of kids can achieve really good things and in fact that's what we want as teachers. So if we think about high achievement, it puts the focus on the lesson and what the lesson enables. Jade, start us off. Um, well, I think that like, customers are partly to blame because if they said something, they, they would have like, maybe he would have changed his ways of treating the uh, camel. Excellent start. Rebecca? They had really unnecessary um, trips up and down the mountains. Okay, how many causes have we got in there, do you think? Um, Probably um, two because they the trips were also, they were unnecessary and they didn't have to go in the first place. But when they did, they went up and down the mountains and not just taking shortcuts. Okay, so there's all sorts of complicated things in there. Could they have done this differently, taking a shortcut? Good, Joe. Because um, the customers found it amusing. That's interesting. So. So what, how does that lead to Alphonse's death? Just because the other customers laugh? Because, like, he would have got depressed. Because he would think, no one would care. So he sort of gives up the will to live, almost? Yeah. Okay. So we've got to... It's easy to know what an unsophisticated answer to the question why is. Uh, it would just be a story or a list. Well, immediately I want to refine that, because there are stories, of course, stories aren't inherently simple. They're, they're marvellously complicated ones. But uh, I'm thinking in terms of kids' answers. You can see very, very straightforward narratives which don't explicitly flag the importance of any particular episode and just are, frankly, one damn thing after another. If I was asking you that question in a history lesson or in any lesson and just said, was it really the straw that broke the camel's back? And you came up to me and you handed in a list of 15 things. Why isn't that good enough? Why isn't that enough? What doesn't that list 
do, which I think some of you are already doing, um, and which I'd certainly like you to do. Emily, first up. Um, well, it doesn't because it's not like if you just put a piece of straw on a camel's back, it's not going to do anything. It's just that over time and everything, it all links up, and it's because of all the other things that maybe the last thing works. So you, you kind of have to explain that. Yeah. Okay, excellent start. Anything else that this list doesn't do? Let's think about, was it really the straw? What am I asking you to do there? Was it really the straw? Annie? Um, well, some were more important than others, like the straw. It was like such a small thing, and the other ones were like bigger, but they were all combined <coughs> to make like the whole thing. Okay, excellent. excellent. The Holy Grail is important, you know, having thought about time, having thought about content, having thought about role, really what explains you know, the death of the camel or whatever it is, which is the crucial thing. So what I'd like you to do is have another think about this list, and I'm sure there are others that you've picked out as well, and think about what kind of role is each of those causes playing. And some of the causes are the types of causes which start something off. Some of these other causes might be things which are speeding things up. Others of these causes might be making things worse for Alphonse. So, so the overloading yeah. speeds up his death, whereas it's the birthday film which starts it off. So we have to okay. order them? Yeah, we're sort of organising them. So some of these causes, like the birthday film, maybe starts things off. That creates the situation where he could die. But then Jade was just saying perhaps the regular overloading speeds up the death because it's regular. It makes his death come quicker, perhaps. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Speeding it up, then it's make, but it's also making it bigger, um, like the overloading. It okay. speeds up sorry, the fact that his back getting worse and he's going to die quicker, okay. but it also makes sorry. things bigger. So okay. it's kind of the same thing. So often those two things might happen. So well, can it just go in both sections? Yeah, maybe some of them are, are, are quite oh, similar. Okay. Lauren did something very interesting when she actually said, well, I'm not sure there's a difference between speeding up and making worse, because a lot of the things which made things worse were speeding things up as well, precisely because they're making things worse. And they're doing well, great, they're starting to challenge the, the very basis of, of, of the activity, which is, which is really interesting. It's given me something to think about. So is there really, is there really a difference between those two things? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong to, to separate those. I don't know. I need to think about that. So why does he go up and down and there? Um, I don't know. Because he's cruel. Yeah. That would make sense. He says yeah. it's cruel. Cool. Like starting off because he actually works cranked. Yeah. Oh, he should have gone to a better owner. Okay. And he could survive with his back problems if he didn't have to go in that way. Okay. 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 Yeah. Actually, there's lots of scope for the kinds of debates that historians have. You know, why do things happen in history? Is it the, the crazed individual, the, the domineering person, Napoleon, the Hitler, etc.? Or is it, uh, is it a, a mass thing where the society as a whole, cultural factors, indifference to the rights of camels? Um, so th there's lots of scope for argument and debate. If you just have a look at these cards, what you've got there is a series of words which you could use to explain how Alphonse died. And so some of these words would be really good for explaining the kinds of causes that start things off. Other words might be really, really helpful if you're trying to explain a cause that speeds things up. Others might be better for explaining one of these causes which makes problems worse. So a word can be almost a precondition for a, a type of thinking that a, a word can give you a whole way of analysing something, that it becomes a label for different types of thought processes in your mind. Um, there's like words like triggered and encouraged and... Yeah, but prompted and triggered are like the same thing, aren't they? Yeah, but they're... And so is contributed. No, contributed should go... Yeah, contributed is there. And broadened and um, multiplied. Uh, motivated should go with prompted. Yeah. Because that's like... But sparked is also like that. And Look, like, if you spark something, it sets things off, so next is like... The Next set Some students, they might gravitate towards trigger because for them that is a genuine progression in using that word, whereas previously they just said then, after this. Whereas, say, for students who are already thinking on a much more sophisticated level, who you might label gifted and talented, perhaps exacerbate is something that they would want to focus on. On the face of it, it's the same lesson, 
but just how you intervene, the kinds of questions you ask different students, differentiates it so that everyone is challenged. Alphonse's back problems was an underlying cause of his death. The, the camel's failure to stand up for one another excavated the problem. Excellent. Back problems are underlying cause. The camel's failure to stand up for themselves exacerbates the problem, makes it worse. Excellent. I don't understand how the back problems were an underlying problem. How could a back, how could his back problem be um, underlying if he was born it with was it? It was an accident. It was. Kind of thing. It, was yeah. it was always that. Lauren, could you, because you, I think it looks like you can answer Jade's question. Would you mind answering Jade's if question? If they hadn't put the heavy loads on his back and like he hadn't showed off in his brakes and things, then it would have stayed underlying because if you haven't aggravated it, then like it's like when you're healing something, like an arm or something. If you leave it to heal, then it'll be fine. But if you keep irritating it, then it's never going to get better. Sometimes you see lessons and the. And there's almost like a glass ceiling in the kind of analysis they can they can do or express, and it, it, it's sometimes very hard to get over that or through that. Um, whereas with the Alphonse story, you almost started to see students thinking, "Oh, now I can actually explain links." Like for me, there wasn't like a complete moment of enlightenment, but <laughs> like I think because we've it's been like quite a lot of work we've been doing on similar kind of things. I think. It kind of slowly does hit you, but it's not like a sudden. Well, at first I thought it was like a bit wig, so it had nothing to do with history. But then you sort of saw how what you were learning from that, you could apply it. Why? Why are we doing this? What's the point? Why am I talking about this dead camel? Are you kind of basically just by showing us this camel, saying that even like the first thing that you look at? doesn't necessarily mean that that's like the only reason basic that there's all like loads and different factors that contribute to everything because you can't really ever say that you're sure about one thing because it's probably like you can never go back to the first point because there isn't ever a first point yeah you could say the straw helps like break the camel's back but you can never say that it definitely did what you don't want to do is divorce the content analysis from training how to think. I think there's a danger there, you, you need to do both. What's the connection between what we've done today and your question on the First World War? Did two bullets lead to 20 million deaths? Off you go, Nicola. I think that Alphon is similar to Kaiser Wilhelm because he shows off and then he suffered for his ignorance. OK, OK, I like that. Um, I think the straw is like the two bullets. Like, it's quite important, isn't it? But it kind it wasn't the only reason. That's what actually made the two people and the camel die. It didn't it wasn't the only reason though, because underneath all that you have got all the ongoing problems. Excellent. Like that. I thought they were gonna compare Alphonse with Kaiser Wilhelm and his birth defects at one point because Kaiser Wilhelm had a withered arm apparently, didn't he, from them? Uh, I think a horse riding accident or something so like does, that. So does Stalin, you know. There's, no, well, there's there's, there's, I think there is a theory there. Yeah. Um, so that I think that's where the, that very sort of brief conclusion um, relating it to the real history, I think that's where the important thing comes out now. Can they actually apply that thinking um, to something real? Mm.